Welcome to Raw with Renika. Today on my show, I have a very special guest, Lisa Brown, who is an author, a writer, a film producer, a mother, a business owner, and so much more. And I'm so thankful to have you here today. And I'm Thank glad you that you came me. on the show. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So first of all, I want to talk about <clears throat> you being an author, having several books out. Can you tell us about um, some of the books you have out, the name of them? And I really want to focus on two, He Played Me, but I want to hear about your other books you have out. So can you tell us the name of your books you got out? Um, well, I have He Played Me, okay. um, He Played Me Too, Secret Enemy, Secret Enemy Too, um, These Niggas for Everybody. Oh. I know, right? That, okay. That's hot one. <laughs> and um, What Goes Around Comes Around is the most recent one. Okay. How long have you been writing? Actually, since 2019, I'm pretty new to this. I've always oh. loved to read. Like, I've always been an avid reader. So when I went through a lot of the things I went through, I'm like, this would make a dope book. And I just sat down in front of my computer, started typing. And I thought you was going to tell me you've been writing since you were a little girl. So you are new to this. I am new to this. Okay, well, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, because I've been writing, too, since I was a little girl, though. Okay. It was always a release for me. Exactly. Like, I would write my feelings down and stuff like that, so... Yeah, but you seem like you've been doing it forever. You seem so comfortable with it. You know, it it, it almost just was like second nature when I start. And like you said, it's a release now. When I I hid so much of my story, when I actually typed it out, I just felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. It was it was amazing. So I don't know. It just I don't know if it's because I've always been a reader. It's just second nature. Now you said you hid so much of your story. Let me ask you this. Why did you hide so much of your story? And what made you comfortable enough to decide to tell your story? I think like most women, we get in situations and it, it, for me, it was where it was really fast. Everything was happening in the relationship fast. And everyone was telling me, you're moving too fast, slow down. And oh, I know what I do. I know, I know. And when everybody start to prove right, it was kind of like I was ashamed to admit that they were right. I was moving too fast. So I just, I didn't, I didn't want to tell anybody because I guess I was ashamed a little bit. Yeah, I definitely know about being ashamed and going through things and relationships. So I understand it. Now, the movie you just made is called He Played Me and it's based off your book. He played me by author Miss LB. You can get it on Amazon Prime. Do you have a website for your books or I do have a website, um, Author Miss LB, but it is down because I'm revamping it. But okay. it should be back up in a couple of weeks. Okay. So He Played Me is based off the story of your life. Yes. Which you turned into a movie. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about it without giving too much away? Because I know that it's going to be released soon and I you know, want people to support you and watch it. And I don't want you to tell them too much. I want them to be shook. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Say we need to stream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, basically, um, I was in a marriage. It was an unhappy marriage. Um, I met another guy and he was everything that I was missing in the marriage that I was in. And... I mean, he just was like a knight in shining armor. I was going through things because I had just lost my mom. My um, ex-husband was like a heavy drinker. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't happy at home. And I did the mistake that most people do. I started telling this man like different things that was wrong at home. And of course, he was everything that I was missing at home. Right, because you was telling him, so I he knew what to do. Things, and that's yeah. what we missed. Like, it's not that you're perfect. You just know yeah. what I'm looking for at the moment. Mm -hmm. So um, I was kind of in the process of separating from my hus my first husband at the time. Mm -hmm. um, we went ahead, uh, went through the divorce. I married the second husband really fast. It was maybe six months. Um, right after we got married, just like that, he changed. And so you married your side piece? I married my side piece. Okay. And, and uh, how does the saying go? He should have just been a side piece. Like every, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, he, you should have kept it at entanglement. I, I should. I should have kept it at <laughs> entanglement. Yes. But of course, I'm like, oh, he's perfect. Yeah, yeah. And he asked me to marry, and I'm like, yes. So um, we got married. It never turned violent, but it was more of the name calling. The um, that was the biggest thing. 
My parents were married for 40 years. Like, I just okay. wasn't used to that. I never heard my dad call my mom out her name. It was like a such a loving and respectful marriage. So I'm like, mm, this is not for me. Okay. And I have two grown boys mm -hmm. and I saw where it was heading because they're so overprotective of me. And that's not to cut you off, but by you having older sons and you going through what you're going through, you know, sometimes they react, they love their mama. Yes. So yes. when you were going through what you were going through, were they around? And if they were around, how did they react? And how did you keep them from reacting how sons Ooh, Lord, can? Lord, that was like the worst part, but they had their own apartment at the time. And when they met him, it was like, Ma, we don't like him. Okay. So they never clicked with him, mm -hmm. and they stopped coming up. Like, we are, you You know, you're my Facebook friend. You see mm -hmm. how I am with my kids. Like, yeah. they're like my little best friend. And y'all deep, too. Exactly. Yes. So it was like they stopped coming over. I would have to go over to their house. They wouldn't even come to my house because mm -hmm. he was there. And um, I wouldn't really tell them that he was calling me out my name because I know how they are and like my kids they're like i said 22 25 they they carry guns they have cpl so i'm like this could just go bad mm -hmm. so again it was one of those sweeping things under the under the rug um until i was just like okay this is what it is because i'm leaving them okay um fast forward once i told him that i was leaving him he went basically nuts i was working mm -hmm. at the secretary of state he came in, he knocked stuff off the counter, like he was belligerent. Like, wow. I, I will never forget his exact words was, bitch, you think you gonna leave me? I'll ruin your life. Oh my goodness. And it, I, you know, people react different ways, but I didn't take him seriously. Right. And right after that, he called my job. He was saying I was doing fraudulent stuff. He got an investigation started and maybe Four months after that, I got shot walking into my house. Damn. Yep. So, do you think it was him or anybody oh, I that know it was? He okay. made fake Facebook pages like you was lucky to dodge those shots. Next time it's gonna be your head. I'm gonna kill oh, your my. kids. Like he was a lunatic, and it still boggles my mind mm -hmm. that I missed all of that. Mm -hmm. So, or later I kind of discovered that I missed it. Or did I overlook it? Because I think sometimes as women, we overlook things. Oh, okay. Well, I am so glad you survived all of that. We're Thank getting you. ready to go into a break. We'll be back and we'll talk more about that. Okay. All right. Thank you for tuning back in to the show today with our special guest, Lisa Brown. Right before we went into break, you was telling us about what was going on in your relationship uh, with your ex and what made you decide to write the book ba based off your life and your movie. So can you finish telling us more about that? Um, so yes, um, it was a situation where he threatened me. He wanted to kill me and I just couldn't understand like all I wanted to do was get a divorce I didn't ask him for anything mm -hmm. um he his mom had just passed so he had just got a big um um insurance policy okay so I didn't and he had property I didn't ask for anything you and just wanted your freedom at I this just point wanted my freedom I just okay. realized that I had made a big mistake and I just wanted out um and it just it just was a ripple effect ripple effect ripple effect where come to find out after everything was said and done he actually had put a hit out on me it was wow. a hit like oh I, he was serious he was serious and um I, it was just it was a terrible terrible scary time now let me ask you this you said right before we went into break that he shot you well he didn't I well was, you were shot i'm sorry i was shot yep, okay, i was correction. walking into the house look back I saw a guy there, and it kind of, that hairs on the neck stand mm -hmm. up, it, that was really, really So you cool. actually saw a guy out there? I did. Did he say anything to you? Did he say your name, shout anything? He just, you looked, you saw him, and he shot you? Well, I looked, I saw him, and he just made me feel uneasy. Right. Because so, you was like, where, who was he? Where he come from? But, and it was kind of like he just popped up, but he walked past me. So mm -hmm. I'm like, well, let me just hurry up and get in the house, because I was um, staying at a little condominium in Southfield. Now, was it late, late it, at night? It was or, not. Early in the night. Um, but it was the end of October. So okay. it was about nine o'clock. 
o'clock. So it's dark. It's exactly, yeah. and it was raining, mm -hmm. and he had a hood on, mm -hmm. and it just he just gave me an uneasy feeling. So I said, well, let me just get in the house, and I put my key in the door, and I said, well, let me look back and see where he's at, and when I looked back, all I saw was the flash from the muzzle. Oh, so he was that close to you? He had. He was about two to three feet from me. What? Mm -hmm. So do you feel comfortable with telling me where you got shot at? Um, well, I got shot in the, on one bullet grazed my side. One bullet um, went through the back of my thigh and came out. And ironically, the worst bullet um, went through my foot because... So I, he shot you more than once? He did. Oh, he wow. He did. I actually dove in the door when I realized that he was shooting at me and I fell and I took my foot to kick the door shut and he literally was, the bullets were still coming through the door and one bullet penetrated the door, went through my foot and shattered every bullet, uh, bone in my foot. Now, was there anybody in your home or it was just you there? Just me there. Oh my God, I know you was in so much pain, scared, terrified. I was. Um, how did you even, did you pass out? Were you able to make a phone call, call 911? Like, how did you get help? I actually called my oldest son okay. first before I, I, it was, the only thing I could think was my kids. And I didn't want them to get a call from the hospital. And right. I'm like, okay, my first thought was if they hear my voice, they may not panic as bad. Mm -hmm. And my, I had literally just, we had a social club at the time. And I had just pulled off of my kids like 10 minutes ago. That was the distance from the social club to home. Okay. And my son answered the phone like, uh, what did you forget laughing? And I said, I just got shot. And he was like, wait, mom, what? I said, I just got shot. He was like, where you at? I said, I'm at home. And he hung up. And were you screaming when you were telling him? I or was so calm. You calm? I think I was in shock. Mm -hmm. I was honestly in shock. Were you in pain, any type of pain? Being that you were in shock, I know sometimes when we go into shock, we might be going through something and we don't feel it at the time. I was not in pain. The only thing I really remember is the way my uh, condo was set up at the time. I had to go upstairs to get to, to my um, open area. Mm -hmm. And I tried to run up the stairs and I fell, like flat on my face. And then I tried to do it again and I fell. And that's when I realized my how bad my foot was, so oh, I just okay. had to crawl up the stairs. But even at that time, the pain didn't come until maybe 30 minutes later. Did any of your neighbors like come out, see what was going on? I mean, from hearing the gunshots or hearing you trying to even get up the stairs at the time I'm or help not you? I'm sure if they came out. I know once I hung up with my son, I called 911 okay. and they had had like six calls from, from, oh, the from the neighborhood saying somebody was out there shooting. Right. Oh, wow. So let me ask you this, your movie being that is based on your life, will we see all of this or any of this or anything similar to it in the movie? You will see all of this in the movie. Okay. Just more detailed about things leading up to it, um, more details about the night of the shooting, more details of the, the kind of the aftermath of everything. How did your family feel if you, in fact, talked to them about it, when you decided to share your story with the world, how did your family feel about that? Were they open to it or? No. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, my mom and dad, um, they are um, deceased. And okay. my kids, they really, because at the time I wrote the book, um, I guess I should mention he has passed since then, my ex-husband okay. has. But at the time I wrote the book, he was still alive. Okay. And I guess it was a situation where I never, kind of said who did what mm -hmm. in the beginning, but they was like, my, that might be a can of worms. And mm -hmm. they, it was more worry than don't do it for any other reason. Did he pass on before you finished the book and published it? He passed on after the book was published. So do you know if he read it before he passed? I'm not sure. Okay. Or anybody in his family? I'm not sure because okay. I don't like deal or talk with any of those. Okay. But now that you've published your book, you made your movie, you've got past all of that, um, what do you want to tell any young woman that is watching today? Uh, what do you want to share with them? Like, what advice would you give them if they're in a relationship with someone who 
Um, they may be experiencing domestic abuse. And let me say this, a lot of times people think domestic violence or, or abuse may just be physical. Exactly. It is not, it is exactly. also verbal, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mentally, a man or a woman could tear you down. So exactly. what, what advice do you wanna give anybody that's watching about being in these type of relationships and any red signs that they could, you know, or red flags as they call them? I think uh, most, I just would like to tell women, don't ignore the red flags. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of the times we're like, so, oh, I'm in love and we overlook. It's not that they're not there, we just overlook them. So anything like, he was very controlling. Um, I think that's the biggest red flag that I ignored was he was very controlling. Now, when you say controlling, do you mean in what you were wearing, your makeup, your hair, finances, or just all around controlling over everything you did? And like, if you went out and went somewhere, was he calling you, blowing you exactly. up? Exactly. It was more, if I went somewhere, he had to go. Mm -hmm. I'm used to just having my own space, going, to, you know, I'll go out to eat by myself. I'll go to the movies by myself, or I do a lot of things with my kids. Mm -hmm. And like, he just forced his way into every part of my life. It was like no more me time. Okay. And I think that's the biggest red flag that I ignored. That's not healthy, that's not normal. I don't care what kind of relationship or marriage you're in. You still should have your life, I should still have my life, and then we have our life together. And he just, but I, I think it was more, when people know they're doing you wrong, they want to be around you more. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, I don't want her saying this or saying that or, it, it was just and I think thing. too when you're in a relationship and somebody is not doing what they're supposed to when they're doing you wrong exactly. they don't want you to be around other people that could tell you to get out of the exactly. re relationship or get I away agree. from them or educate you or make you see things that you are not seeing because you're in love you I know agree. what I'm saying I agree so I yeah agree. so you're in a new relationship now I see I that you're newly engaged and everything you want to tell us a little about that before we go into break? All I really want to know is, are you happy? <laughs> I am happy. He makes me happy. We have our, our little days where I still... Which is normal. But I'm happy. He's a good man. Great. Well, we're going to go into break, and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about Miss Lisa Arthuris Brown. <laughs> okay. Thank you for tuning back in. Of course, today, again, like I said earlier, we have a special guest, Lisa Brown, who is an author, an entrepreneur. If you didn't see the show earlier, if you're just tuning in or catching, catching up with us, she is an author, an entrepreneur. She is a new film producer, and she is so much more. And so we're just getting to know a little bit more about you because you're on another level now. Well, I'm trying to you be. You're on another level like now. You. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, so... This is just great because people get to know a little bit more about you, get to know about your story and some things you've been through and, you know, what uh, encouraged you or made you even want to do this. And again, I am totally shocked that you are telling me you are a new writer because <laughs> you seem so comfortable in that. A lot of times people are not comfortable with writing or doing different things. Like when I tell people I'm a writer and that I write, they're like, oh my God, I can't even write a paragraph, let alone a book, you know? So I am just really impressed by that. Thank you. And I'm so glad that you came on the show today to share your story. And I can't wait for women to see this and hopefully they learn something from your exactly. situation and what you've been through. But I wanna talk about your movie premiere. Okay. Can you tell us about when it premiered? Can you tell us how you felt? I want to know what you wore, what made <laughs> you make the decision. I want to know all about it. Well, the book did so good. It was a, actually at first I was shooting the movie for my YouTube channel. Okay. And I was going to break it down into episodes. So wait, let me ask you this. I didn't know you had a YouTube channel, so you're educating me. Can you tell us more about the YouTube channel, if you're still doing it, or if that's something you're done with now that you're into film, mm -hmm. or well, tell us about the YouTube channel. I have put it on a back burner. Okay. I won't say I'm done with it, but okay. I have definitely put it on a back burner. Um, I guess it's a little harder than what most people think to get the streams up, to get the viewers up, to get the, um, on Instagram, I forgot, what is it called? Not followers, uh, subscribers. Okay. So um, that was the goal originally, okay. was to get my subscribers up by putting the, the movie on my channel. But now you got your fans up. Uh, exactly. Period. But I'm going to tell you <laughs> what actually happened was, and he's been so wonderful, 
Alfonso, my main oh, okay. um, actor. I know Alfonso. I, I yeah. so love him. Um, I met him through um, a girlfriend of mine that I go 20 years back with. Okay. And he read the book and he said, Lisa, no, you can't put this on your YouTube channel. This is a a movie. This okay. Is, and so he actually encouraged me and he talked so to me. So he didn't want to encourage you to turn into he, a film. Okay, Alfonso. Okay, Alfonso. Alfonso Saddle. <laughs> Yeah. He did. So um, I knew he was my job because I, I actually first saw him in Your Deceitful Passion. Okay. And I'm like, I think he would be perfect for my lead character. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it just snowballed from there and it, it just took off and we shot the movie. The premiere was June 19th at the um, Bel Air. Mm -hmm. I honestly almost had an anxiety attack did you i bet you did it was like so <laughs> overwhelming be, with between the love and support mm -hmm. to know so many people were here they were gonna see the real real and raw yeah. story so yeah. it was like okay i literally like only my kids and my husband know that but right now like okay i, I almost went into a panic attack mm -hmm. um but it was just amazing to see it was such a beautiful night it was amazing Good. to see how many people um came out everything turned out uh, beautiful i wish i would have been able to enjoy it more because okay. I was just all over the place. Yeah. Pictures. So it was like something. You like, was working. You was networking. I was networking. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm grateful. Um, I love everyone for coming out and supporting me. Um, but I had that's the only little thing I kind of wish I could have slowed down a little bit. Well, and, you will. The more films you make, exactly. the more comfortable you'll be, the more relaxed you'll be. And... I can't wait for you to experience when you first see it on television streaming. I think I might pass out. You gonna lose your mind. I said that I'm like. I oh ran God. around the house <laughs> when my movie first uh, came on Amazon Prime. Girl, wasn't nobody there but me. So when they sent me the email and told me that it was now live streaming on Amazon Prime, I ran around the house. I watched it first by myself, and okay. then I posted on Facebook like my movie is out. Okay. I ran around the house screaming, okay. so I can only imagine how you're gonna I feel. I think I might pass out to just see it right there. So that's what we're waiting on now. Now the next movies that you do, because I know you're not done. This is just the beginning oh my God, for you. It's so addictive. Yeah, it is. Just to see all of your creativity come to this beautiful film, it's addictive. Now yes. I'm like, okay, I have to do another one. Yeah, and you're gonna keep wanting to do more and more and more. But let me ask you this. The rest of your films, would they be based off some of your books you've already written? Do you have new stories, ideas? Like, what's your plan? What do you, what's your goals? Well, I definitely think it's two more of my books that I think will make really dope movies that I plan on turning into movies. What about He Played Me Too? Are you going to turn that into a film? And is it He Played Me Too? Is that still part of your story or did you... Uh, venture off and turn it into fiction. I think he played me to, I would classify it, I, I wouldn't classify it as based on my true story because mm -hmm. it's a lot more. This story is 90%, it was very minimum that I changed, you okay. know, for obvious legal reasons. It was okay. some things I had to. Um, he played me to, I couldn't call that based on a true story okay. because I want to say it may be 50 50. A okay. Bit. So, I am considering it, mm -hmm. but it's other books that I want to flip into a movie first. Out of all your books besides He Played Me, uh, the rest of your books, or even with He Played Me, which one are you the most excited about? You know how sometimes as an author, when you write, you be like, I'm writing that fire. You know, so which book, or if not all of them, make you feel like, you know, when you read them or, you know, like, that was fire. I did that. All of them. No. Okay. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at but you. But it just when he played me was more um, therapeutic. Is that okay. what I'm looking for? Okay. So I was. It was just amazing to see me transform my story into a book. I think after that, it was just the creativity where I'm like, okay, girl, did you come up with that plot twist? Oh, that was dope. So I think all of them because I put so much into them. I love plot twists. I love like just thinking outside of the box, mm -hmm. but keeping it realistic too. When you wrote He Played Me, was it emotional for you as you were writing the book? Did you find yourself in your emotions about, because it's your real life. Right. And you were replaying everything that you've been through over again by putting it on paper. So did you ever like cry or Definitely. feel any type of, okay. Definitely. I think Definitely my most 
um, emotional book. I cried a lot writing to the point where I had to get off the computer and stop a oh, lot of wow. nights. Like, okay, that's enough. I was, I knew I would get to that limit where it was like, okay, that's enough. And then mm -hmm. I would get off, I would cry, pray. Um, but I just kept telling myself during the whole process, this is going to be a release for so many women. Um, this is going to help so many women that it, I just kept going. Now, and let me ask you this. I'm going to go back to the night you got shot. When you got shot, what was going through your, through your head? Because that is like crazy. You know what I'm saying? And you got shot more than one time. Did you think you were going to be here to do this interview today? You know what? I, I can't honestly answer that. I think my biggest fear was, even though my kids are grown, I just kept thinking, if I die, how would that affect them? Because mm -hmm. we're just so close and mm -hmm. we do everything together. Like, that's the only thing I could can remember thinking was get to the phone, get help, because you can't leave your kids behind. Right. Well, God had a plan for you. He did. He had more for you to do, and you out here doing it. You're not letting them down. You're not disappointing him. Can you um, tell us where we can find you on social media? Um, my Facebook is Arthur Miss LB. My Instagram is Arthur Miss LB. My YouTube channel is Arthur Miss LB. And again, my website is um, Arthur Miss LB, but it's down. We're, okay. we're revamping it, so it'll be back up in a couple of weeks. Well, again, I want to thank you for coming on the show. We're getting thank ready to you. wrap it up. And I appreciate you for taking the time out and doing this interview for me. And I would like to welcome you back again on Raw with Renika real soon. Thank you. After the next movie, I'll be back. Most definitely. <laughs>